okay so welcome back and uh, today we'll try to analyze uh, in more detail uh, the definition of, of ambient intelligence that we quickly gave uh, last week uh, in order to understand the characteristics uh, of the projects uh, that we must uh, uh, define and create hmm? um, so uh, we'll try to understand better those diagrams uh, uh, sensing acting uh, interacting <coughs> and reasoning that i already shown uh, last week uh, and uh, that will be the basis uh, of the functional architecture of our projects um, first of all let's uh, have a look at what's happening uh, in the technology field uh, we have a lot of different uh, technologies that have been emerging and uh, expanding in the last years uh, concerning uh, intelligent environments uh, and uh, uh, we saw a trend uh, on one hand uh, of an increasing uh, oops an, an increasing uh, uh, smartness uh, in the in the building uh, sector so from uh, basic uh, OMA or automation or building automation systems just basic automation source or remote control to what we are calling in smart homes or smart buildings that not just don't just um, execute tasks or activate or deactivate uh, uh, comments uh, or circuits electrical circuits but they can actually start uh, <coughs> also to manage uh, the user interfaces the media and do that with some sort of uh, intelligence more or less and this was one trend of building houses or buildings uh, with some smartness some intelligence within the other trend uh, was that you you all know uh, is the the development of uh, mobile devices that st was started uh, with smartphones uh, and through the shrinking in scale of these devices uh, currently is able to have uh, or we ha we are able to have a lot of uh, very small smart devices and if they are small it means that the, you, we, we can put them everywhere in the corners of the uh, or in the hide them uh, somewhere in the environment or just wearing them so all the wearable computing uh, uh, devices these two trends uh, found a convergence point uh, into what we call the internet of things so the infrastructure of uh, connecting uh, any many different kinds of devices uh, together uh, so that connecting to the internet uh, not uh, smartphones uh, sm uh, small devices miniaturized devices homes uh, home appliances uh, uh, sensors and so on everything we try to connect them and manage them uh, in the internet uh, domain thanks to a couple of uh, enabling technologies that are listed here on the left uh, which are all the in connectivity increases so right now it's more and more normal you know, to find internet connectivity everywhere you go and all the cloud computing resources where you can actually offload computation because uh, small devices are not powerful enough uh, for example and uh, so what we are doing actually is trying to exploit this set of technologies mm, the internet of things is not one technology it's a set of different technologies uh, that enable us to give uh, uh, ip addresses to objects actually and uh, uh, to let them communicate with other objects or with uh, online services basically uh, so well the question of what is the iot is quite easily uh, replied uh, the question which is more difficult and we are trying to let's say to give a partial answer to that in this course is uh, what is useful for so what can you do what are the applications no? what it is okay it's giving connectivity to objects okay what for for doing what hmm? <coughs> and that's uh, the big question we have a lot of technologies uh, with uh, no clear or strong uh, applications forward so uh, actually what uh, we saw here uh, from a technology point of view is a set of evolutions so each, each kind of device or technology went uh, became better and a stronger inter integration trend so different technologies that were once separated are now all collected connected to each other uh, 
Uh, so that okay uh, enables new possibilities but it also increases a lot uh, the complexity of the systems so if you are thinking about an iot system or in a, in a step we will see an ambient intelligence system you have to deal with uh, maybe mm, small sensors uh, internet connection connectivity cloud computing mobile devices everything is needed to create one application so uh, is not enough to learn or to manage properly just one kind of uh, um, technology by the way if you have a look uh, at the market offerings uh, for smart homes or smart buildings uh, what you see is that uh, this uh, let's call it smart home hmm? even if it's not just home uh, last time we saw that there are, there are a wide range of possibilities of living spaces that we want to consider this year it's a market that is uh, currently under attack i would say from different kinds uh, of industry sectors so you have the people that uh, uh, were traditionally building electric plants and components uh, i don't know uh, in, in italy we have bitticino for example or gavis or uh, um, schneider electric in france uh, uh, that traditionally built uh, electrical plants and they want to sell you the smart home with their devices with their technologies we have uh, consumer electronics uh, companies uh, let's say samsung they're trying to sell you the smart fridge the smart dishwasher the smart device uh, you have a computer company so apple for example they want to sell you the apple tv or the uh, Apple home device and so on huh? um, telecommunication companies telecom team no, is trying to sell you the you know the, the smart TV on their line on their telephone line and then with that they, they, they will try to sell additional services hmm? um, people coming from security uh, usually you have secure alarm system and then with the alarm system it's already in your home they're trying to sell you additional automation so you can also control the lights not just the security um, and so on mm -hmm. and uh, the idea is that all these kind of industries are trying to make their products smarter and are trying to, s to tell you that in your home you want their technology the issue is that these technologies are mostly incompatible with each other because they have so different approaches technical approaches are different home automation components uh, run on a dedicated custom bus don't speak ethernet don't speak tcp ip uh, and so they are very difficult to integrate with other kind of devices so you may have different smart devices in your house that don't ex uh, exchange data with each other <coughs> the consumer electronic world, world aims at selling devices selling objects in the moment in the exact moment when you buy a, you know, a smart uh, air conditioner once you signed the, the credit card slip uh, then you are no longer interesting to them they already sold your product they hope everything goes well for two years so they don't have to do any warranty repairs uh, but then you can go away you should go away you are from that moment you are cost so actually they're they're thinking about one device at a time trying to sell the device uh, and stop other providers like telecoms for example sell a service so every month you pay a service with your telecom operator with netflix or whatever eh? and so the is the interest in not so in selling you something big up front but it will but in having continuity of services so you can buy something and then do some small increases so there are no just for, the, for small examples uh, different approaches to the market that make technologies and also contracts or hmm, uh, incompatible with each other what is the interest uh, of uh, i don't know uh, maybe amazon alexa 
no? that listen to your comments in your house Wh why are they should they be interested in letting you in interface with some device that you bought uh, on a on a website uh, by your uh, by your own hmm? they they have no interest in commercially that device is in your house for buying amazon products not for giving you smartness or your house they don't care about the smartness that is a a key for selling you the product whose real purpose is different so actually we are a bit uh, in a all these companies try to put us in a wonder situation oh everything is very nice very beautiful but actually what they're trying to do is to conquer the consumer okay okay we don't care about this uh, in this course uh, about the you know the, the general economics of these smart buildings uh, uh, domain but uh, it, we must recognize that the technical approaches are very different and there are reasons for uh, business reasons for the in incompatibility for a total lack of compatibility of different types of devices okay and this would be a problem for us if we want to create an application that integrates different technologies mm? these technologies are built for not being easy to integrate most of them mm? because e each of them is a revenue stream for their respective company i hope this is going to change but not very quickly so what we are focused on is here the, the upper levels uh, about applications uh, and users of this kind of uh, uh, iot systems uh, and we call them the ambient intelligence or intelligent environments when we look more at the application or what the system does instead of uh, what are the technologies that we are using okay so we'll try to leave for leave aside for a moment the technology focus and focus more on the application so if we focus on the application what is ambient intelligence well there is not a single definition and this is not a new concept if you search ambient intelligence you find a, a document called the scenarios for ambient intelligence in 2010 okay it was eight years ago this report was published in 2001 okay so we are 70 years in after this report has been published and if you read that uh, it's available from the european commission website uh, just uh, search for this ti this title scenarios for ambient intelligence in, tw in 2010 and it's still uh, current meaning then most of the scenarios that are described in that report are still future for us so in 17 years they didn't happen so in 2001 they imagined something would happen would happen in 10 years it didn't or something has happened of course something is being correctly predicted but many of these scenarios are still future to come so they're still work for us you know there is still a, a, a growing uh, uh, domain and the concept this is taken from this report the concept of ambient intelligence uh, provides a vision of the information society where the emphasis is on greater user friendliness so it's not technology for the focus but user friendliness services support user empowerment user empowerment means uh, the user decides who gets to decide what the system does should be the user not the system not the machine learning not the the, uh, the supplier or whatever and support for human interactions okay so that's not just having a more optimized system but a system that actually interacts with the user people are surrounded by intelligent intuitive interfaces these three words will kill you because it's really difficult to make an intelligent intuitive interface that are embedded in all kinds of objects okay in 2001 the term iot didn't exist yet but the vision of having all kinds of objects uh, was already there in the mind of the developers and the researchers an environment that is capable of recognizing and responding to the presence of individuals so the environment knows that you are there knows probably what you are doing and uh, responds not to a specific command that you're giving but just for you being there or doing something and maybe different individuals so if you have two or three people living in the same space the system could react differently to each of them 
because their preferences are different because their needs are different because their behaviors are different in a seamless enough an obtrusive and often invisible way so it's not a system that constantly bothers you ask you for permission ask you confirmation or requires you to do action it's something that should happen like you have you know an invisible friend with you that knows you and helps you in what you are doing hmm? that was the vision 2001 and people were starting to think about that even even years before that it's still uh, if you read this paragraph today in 2018 it seems future because currently we you cannot go in the market and buy something that has all of these characteristics hmm? i don't know i i don't know any solution that has all of these some solutions have some of these items but not all, all of them and uh, okay uh, many other papers have, have tried to work on that definition but we are not here to do some analysis of the papers the definitions that the shortest one that i like because that's maybe the, the core of, of what we want to do is uh, this three lines definition by diane cook in 2009 an ambient intelligence system so we are talking about the system spe specifically not a device not an application not an interface it's a system composed of many different parts is a digital environment so we don't focus on the devices we focus on the environment digital of course there, are, there will be devices in the environment that supports people in their daily lives uh, this is what uh, may be producers of different kinds of equipment forget uh, because they're trying to sell a product okay but it's not the focus is not the product is how this product will help people in their daily lives and then we have these two uh, uh, objectives no sorry ad adverbs proactively but sensibly so proactively means uh, even before the user asks so the actions of the system should be be in some cases before uh, the system should make the first step towards you should not wait for your command so the system should uh, guess what you want in that moment should I, I would say the system knows but actually it's impossible to know what a person is thinking or is, uh, uh, is wanting to do so the system should guess approximate probably the user intentions and should act according to its uh, forecasting or to its understanding of the user intention and this forecasting should be sensible uh, should not uh, um, do be too wrong to make the user uncomfortable okay so this uh, balance between proacting so uh, imagining what you want and starting to do it uh, and uh, being correct so uh, doing actually what you want and not just the opposite because you misjudged something uh, this balance is very difficult uh, to achieve but it's what gives the um, the impression of intelligence to the environment uh, there was another the definition from the reading that i suggested you of intelligent environment which is a very close definition you know different groups of researchers have their own preferred words for referring more, more, more or less to the same thing but here i only will uh, outline that uh, the focus is again to enhancing the experiences lived by the occup occupants of a given space hmm? so that would be our focus that is why i ask you to start thinking about the users not about the technologies or, or other stuff intelligent environments cover require different types of technologies of course we need uh, sensors and actuators to interface with the environment to sense what's happening we need a uh, human computer interaction methodologies to uh, interface with the user so we need the inter user interfaces we need touch interfaces we need voice interfaces interact met methods for interacting with the user uh, we need uh, a lot of infrastructure networks or so every object should be connected in some way via bluetooth via wi-fi via connected cable via serial yes via another dozen of different protocols that we may have 
and the middleware libraries frameworks that help us to manage all this flow of information this is not the envi intelligent environment these are just the parts that are needed to build one hmm? pervasive and ubiquitous computing means uh, uh, being able to distribute the computation in many different pieces so it's not a big computer that you install and does everything but every node every piece of 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 computing equipment maybe a small sensor maybe a small embedded computer will do a, a part of the computation uh, and they are distributed and on top of that uh, well to add this uh, in, um, proactive but sensible behavior you need some sort of intelligence hmm? in our in this course this part of artificial intelligence will be not really required or very weak uh, no, because we don't have the, the knowledge uh, uh, to build uh, uh, um, artificial intelligence systems okay you will uh, you will learn that uh, in, in the in the in the master degree uh, uh, if you if you take that, that course about artificial intelligence so we'll try to do something very simple very soft hmm? but let's not lose uh, the focus of this picture and so this uh, leads us to this uh, diagram that uh, you know uh, is the core of what an ambient intelligence system an MEI system let's, let's call it short an MEI system should do in order to respect the definition in order to satisfy what the definition requires so every MEI system must have these four functions must implement these four functions first of all sensing okay you must uh, remember from the definitions you must uh, sense the presence of the of the people what they are where they are who they are what they are doing so you need sensors sensors may be sensors on the user you know wearable bracelet that are, is telling me what i'm doing where i am video sensors audio sensors other sensors in the house you know we have a, a scale there when it, it, it senses how much you're waiting or where uh, where you're going uh, um, drawer locks for knowing if a door or a drawer or a window is open or closed uh, uh, presence sensor uh, temperature sensor gas sensor whatever you want there are really thousands of different sensors that you may want to install in the in the environment uh, depending on what you are going to measure or what your application needs to measure without sensing an MEA system would be blind would have no idea of what to do okay so you collect information and then okay there, here we have some some example of types of sensors but uh, here we have a, a picture that I grabbed uh, maybe a couple of years ago just by doing a quick search uh, uh, of a set of sensors that are compatible with one specific technology in this case it was z-way but uh, it doesn't matter about uh, wh what kind of protocol they use uh, if you search you really find thousands of different sensors okay depending on the, on the on the physical quantity that you want to measure so this is the list of our problems okay let's not start from the availability of the sensor we know that there are and they are usually low cost so even if during the project you need to measure something strange usually we can buy the sensor that is needed uh, during the course okay it happened uh, in many cases or or maybe you already have some of them uh, available or many of them or sensors on the physical body of the user okay that's the other possibility hmm? sensing the posture sensing the, mov the movement the position the heart rate uh, the temperature the skin conductivity or what you like the issue with sensors is that they produce data of course they produce data but this data is a bad example of data that you can get usually a sensor produces large amount of data these data are so you need to store them to process them in some way these data are usually very noisy you don't have a very precise calibrated sensor in a controlled environment okay. that would be in a laboratory 
but in the real environment you need something that is cheap so it's not precise maybe sensitive to electromagnetic noise uh, maybe sensitive to the temperature is not really well calibrated so it loses some data mm, i remember we had uh, a look at some data collected from the energy sensor of, of polytechnic so every 15 minutes in every uh, corridor there is a, a measurement that tells uh, as how much energy is draw electrical energy is drawn there were there there are months missing some months are totally missing no? because uh, maybe the sensor was was broken and nobody noticed it and, and so I analyzing and using this data is very is very uh, you need to be very careful it's very dangerous because you cannot rely on them you, ne you need to filter them you need to check them and so on there may be missing periods maybe uh, a high level of noise and so you need to uh, um, process this data with high level of suspicion okay it seems that this data tells this information but uh, you're, you're never really sure and uh, so this is a this will be a, a course on its own on how to deal with the, with this data we'll try to minimize the, this effect uh, but uh, try not to think your project uh, too much on data processing try to minimize the data processing part because otherwise it would be very difficult to make it work correctly in a short amount of time because all or most of these uh, issues with sensor data can be corrected usually they can be corrected if you have longer historical series series of data so you can uh, uh, compute the trends uh, the variations uh, find outliers and so on do strong statistical analysis to filter out good data from go from bad data uh, the issue is that during the course we will not be able to collect long, large amount of data. Hmm? So let's try to to work with with small data to to with current data rather than doing uh, big computing on historical data. But when we have collected all this data, we need uh, to decide what to do. Okay, the system will collect the data from different sensors. We may have one, two, seven. 25 different sensors in our system i collect the data from them all and i construct a model a reasoning model in my system say okay what is happening now is uh, the person at home is it cold is it uh, uh, hot is uh, is it moving or whatever i try to extract some information from this data and from this information we need to decide what to do so this is the, is the algorithmic part the software that in some way tries to decide what to do hmm? um, usually we need to understand what the user is doing and what the environment is doing at the same time and we combine the two and decide an action this is where i suggest you to keep the features of the system small so one two three main features and try to build the system around these features because each of these features of the system will require different types of reasonings different types of inference with different type of analysis and making all of them right will require a lot of time so let's focus on some specific uh, functions that uh, will allow us to minimize the number of data that, that we acquire and simplify the number of compute the type of, of computation that we do on the system um next uh, once the system understood what the user wants or the system thinks <laughs> he understood what the user wants uh, he should do it he should modify the environment acting uh, no? modifying something in the environment uh, to make it more pleasant or to make it more suitable or to make the user more happy how well changing the lights changing uh, switching something on and off uh, uh, playing music uh, moving some objects uh, driving a robot uh, whatever depends on the project but something in the physical world must be directly controlled by the system okay a lot of uh, projects uh, that you find uh, in the on the internet on kickstarter or stuff like that uh, forget about this step they do a lot of sensing and they give you nice dashboard when you can see your data they analyze your data and they give you statistics it's only half the way collecting the data 
now from this data we must act we must go back to the environment and change it to something otherwise it, it will be only data collection it doesn't make collecting data collecting information and analyzing information doesn't make the environment more intelligent no? it makes only a monitored in, uh, environment not an intelligent environment to make it intelligent the, the environment should react in some way hmm? possibly in a sensible way and so there is also a huge number of devices that we can use for acting less than with sensors because the types of modifications that we can make in the system are uh, smaller but uh, uh, again don't be limited by the technology start with the, your ideas and then uh, we will find uh, together which is the best way of, of achieving a uh, given result uh, usually everything that be can be commanded electrically is easy to do with a motor or with another an already existing relay lights are very easy to do water is also easy to control you so you just have to control a valve or uh, multimedia video and audio are very easy to control mm. so everything that can change uh, the shape of an environment opening and closing a door is again a motor so may maybe we don't put a motor on these big uh, doors but we mm, can create a small scale model for showing that it's not a problem mm. but we need to think about uh, the action on the environment by the system in the lab uh, we we'll see a lot of different uh, home automation technologies that is available for you to use and to land many of them are well uh, are wireless so are very easy to to move and to install you don't need to do any cabling at all <coughs> and finally the other step is interacting so having the user in the loop having the way for the user to modify the behavior of the system to give comments of the, to the system of course the system should behave correctly even without an explicit command but in some times the user should be able to give a comment to express their preferences to check some data or some information so the user will need the user interfaces actually the user interacts with the system in two ways through interfaces web mobile wearable or whatever these are explicit interactions or implicit interactions by just moving in the environment or using the environment so this is a kind of interaction we call them natural interaction because it doesn't require an artificial interface just by living in the space uh, the environment will adapt or will react hmm? So the user doesn't even feel psychologically like he's using a computer. He just feels that he's living in a, in a house, in a smart house, uh, or in a smart environment, uh, because the environment uh, follows him or even goes forward to him. Uh, so this part is more a consequence of the acting part. So if the environment is modified, then I feel the house that makes uh, some steps toward me or toward my needs but then i will also need some some kind of interface uh, explicit interface to to see the system to to start some actions and so on mm -hmm. so our systems will have a mix of in, of interaction methods some will be direct interaction natural interaction some be will be explicit interaction through interfaces that's why we need uh, to learn some uh, web technologies to with the websites and some mobile technology to with some some mobile interfaces no, not not something not uh, very complex uh, applications but a bit of that is needed otherwise the user is not in control no? the users cannot be involved directly um, so interacting with the user can use uh, you know computer interfaces or can also use uh, uh, traditional interfaces so if I see that button there close to the door, not similar, similar to these ones, my approach to that is that of a very, let's say, low technology device. It's just a push button, okay? I imagine, oh, maybe I don't imagine anything, but if I imagine something, I imagine there will be a relay after that that will uh, change the switch lights on or off. 
but maybe in the reality behind that, that button there will be a computer maybe that does something much more complex but the e, um, doesn't scare me because it looks me to me like a very familiar object hmm? so uh, I interact with an intelligent environment with the same kind of interface that they would use to interact very with a dumb environment with a stupid one with an old one uh, because uh, it's better to stick with the behaviors of the object that the user know than to introduce new fancy objects that in some way are scary or not reliable in the same way if you think about it it's the same that happens every day you drive a car every day you, you drive a car you are not uh, driving the car actually you are telling a set of computers that are in your car what you want to do so when you put the throttle actually you are not injecting uh, gas into the the motor you are giving an input to then uh, an, uh, a control unit an electronic control unit in ECU, that decides how much gasoline to inject in the motor it's not you who decides it's a computer but the interface is still a pedal like it was uh, maybe 40 years ago when i learned to drive no a bit less um, the interface is the same what happens behind is totally different no? the the god that tells you uh, how many kilometers per hour you are going is not connected to the wheels maybe 30 years ago there was a physical cable that was spinning uh, rapidly for transferring the rotation speed of the of the, um, of the wheels to the odometer now it's not there's nothing physical anymore there's just an ECU, an ECU an electronic control units that measures the speed of the house from a late, from any other factors there will not be a sensor for the engine speed and then reports that so actually we are still familiar with traditional objects but they behind the scenes they are more intelligent we don't need uh, something looking like star trek to 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 make a, a home more intelligent we just need the, the behavior of the system to be better and the interaction to be still easy computers should disappear as much as possible it's a pity we are computer engineers most of us but we like computers but the, the rest of the people maybe you don't know it but the rest of the people don't care don't give a then about computers they just they, do, they just want things done okay and so if we use computers and hide them uh, the, the acceptance will be higher this is a picture that i particularly love because i hate it uh, that i i shot personally so i is not a, um, a fake picture in a house that was supposed to be smart uh, it was an apartment three or four house uh, three or four rooms uh, and besides each door of that apartment you had something like this so you can imagine a small apartment with well, some a block here a block there and so because uh, uh, lights were controlled uh, the doors and windows were controlled uh, temperature were controlled everything was controlled okay the, the level of automation in that house was excellent what they forgot is about uh, the user interface so for example the the number of functions that were exposed to the user was very high you don't need every possible function from every possible corner of your house come on okay most of the times you only needed more two or three or four functions all the rest maybe you don't need to put it uh, in uh, in many places you're, you're just confusing then the people who do, did uh, the electrical pants uh, decided because yes that uh, the, the usually these plaques uh, should be horizontal we are used to see them horizontal yes even there's there are um, regulations that say us how the 503 uh, box should be should be put into the wall okay the people doing this work decided because they did 
to put them vertical with no reason and then they put plaques of different colors without any rule so it's not that oh, yeah, they, the red plaque uh, drives the doors and the, the yellow one drives the lights no they just had them randomly in the bag they put them randomly okay so a level of missing suggestions an opportunity for giving familiarity was broken because the, the same device that you are familiar with was put in a strange way so you start thinking that it shouldn't be like the normal light that you use and then these colors you start thinking about why what is the rule there is no rule and when is and where there's no rule when there's no consistency the users fail well they're not the users that fail it's the our system that fails the users is failing to the users and so what happens is that it's impossible to memorize what every single button does so since it was impossible in a second time those people added these, these uh, small icons here small difficult to understand so instead of going there just pushing the button you have to go there and think uh, look at the images and think what this does mean so does it mean open and, uh, the door or close the door and once you understood what the icon da did uh, then you decided which button to press so you took uh, two or three seconds every time you had to interact with the house imagine in the morning uh, where you just wander around uh, if you had this sort of decoding power in your mind no you don't <laughs> and uh, so what the people did uh, actually was to tape some of them with a very don't touch uh, sentence on that uh, and say okay we don't use the doors and so on so this was, this was just a, very, a bad example, but they paid real money for doing that. So, um, to avoid, so make the interface simple, natural, direct, and if there is any complexity, try to hide it. It's the intelligence of the system that should deal with complexity, not the user interface. Hmm? So this is valid for the, for the physical interface, uh, but also for the computer interface the rule is the same make it simple and when you made it simple they make it a bit sim simpler yet okay uh, and i live i like this uh, to mention these two tweets uh, of these important people the first one is uh, tim o'reilly you probably have read or known uh, many of uh, the books uh, that he's publishing he's one of the most important publishers in the ict domain o'reilly uh and this other one was uh i don't remember was an, an entrepreneur of a big company maybe netscape i don't remember but uh, these things these tweets are from 2014 so four years ago now and what they told actually is okay the internet of things is good but we need to think about the internet of things and humans so too much technology doesn't do any good uh, what are the users doing with the technology and what uh, most of what we need for smart cities already exists four years ago and today even more are, are our cities smart i don't see anything smart while walking on the streets or whatever there there are a lot of many strange projects uh, with the smart city label but the actual um, help or support that they give to regular citizens is practically non-existent hmm? because many projects are just uh, uh, for just to talk about torino or the city there were big announcements at the beginning of this year uh, that torino will be the first city to experiment uh, this 5g cellular networks uh, and uh, there will be a smart city because it will be the first 5g uh, city I don't know what that means okay actually I know it doesn't mean anything uh, why should I care about the frequency <laughs> of the set of the cellular network what are the services you are providing me huh? I don't care if you're 5g 4g 3g 17g if you don't do anything for me ah but you have, will have uh, megabytes per second okay but for doing what for watching cat videos maybe 3g was enough okay and so that that's the 
the point huh? it's not uh, it's not just my point but actually which goes in some way against the companies that live on technology they want to sell you the technology for technology's sake we are taking a system level an application level okay and for doing that we need to think about the user um okay so the consequence of an, a well-designed uh, ambient intelligence system is that uh, it actually exhibits some common features and uh, i will try to summarize them with the six uh, keywords so the four main steps uh, uh, the uh, sensing acting reasoning and interacting are essential otherwise it's not an mei system it cannot be intelligence cannot be proactive uh, because technically it can't okay then a well-designed system should have uh, also these uh, kind of characteristics okay uh, not all of them would apply to every project it depends depending on the type of on the type of project of course but uh, these are they will help us as a sort of a checklist uh, to think about whether a project is uh, good or not so two of them are sensitivity and responsiveness here sensitive and responsive the first two and uh, we already have them because the sensing is an is a step in our four step uh, um, diagram and the responsive also is able uh, the acting on the environment so these two are just a direct consequence of the four step but the others could be interesting an adaptive system an adaptive system is a system that is able to adapt to the context meaning that for the same input it can provide different output because the context has changed very stu stupid example i enter a room the light is switched on i enter a room at 2 a.m the light is still off because maybe somebody is sleeping in the same room it's a bedroom and somebody else is there so i don't want to switch the light on when you come back late okay from your parties and you go home you don't want your house to light every light uh, and uh, wake up your parents or or friend or, um, or brothers and so on so the action is the same user is detected entering the house the context is different day versus night other people in the house or not this is the context the context the knowledge of the context what what else is happening should influence the choice of the system to the same kind of input to the same kind of action and uh, in understanding the context is very complex because you need uh, to analyze data from the environment for the users and uh, understand differences okay does the situation today is equal to yesterday or or is it different or is it uh, a different context something can be pre-programmed something can only be statistically recognized hmm? so this adaptivity is, is a characteristic of intelligence being able to give different responses for the same situations because something else has changed so i decided that the best course of action would be different it's not just a remote control every time i push number five it changes the channel transparency is uh, the ability of the uh, ambient intelligence system to be invisible or not to be perceived directly by the users something that does nice things uh, i don't see no i don't need to see the computer huh? um, there was a, a special issue of a journal from 1991 so these are new no they are not they are nice concepts they are not new concepts but one would expect that a very nice concept like this 30 years after should already be the normal way to go and actually we are still fighting for that the most profound technologies are those that disappear nobody wants to see their computer there uh, they want to do things 
interact without using keyboard mouse screen all this clumsy equipment okay why do you need to take the phone in your hand to open the door it's easier to open the door with your handle uh, rather than with the phone for example so it's more direct maybe the handle of the door is the computer in the shape of a handle instead of the shape of a, of a smart screen or whatever hmm? so trying to make objects more intelligent rather than adding new layers of interfaces or new devices to control the object okay so the more you hide technology the better ubiquitous computing means uh, ubiquitous is a strange word uh, the, literally it means uh, found everywhere something that is everywhere and uh, pervasive uh, is something that uh, is uh, you expect to be found uh, every in every place uh, of interest actually so more or less they call about pervasive and ubiquitous computing saying uh, architect computing architectures where there are a lot of computing nodes let, let me call them computing nodes something with a microprocessor in there microprocessor and connectivity the two together make a sensor can make a very small embedded computer a controller a raspberry an arduino doing something doing some function can be a smartphone can be a computer can be a server can be a cloud uh, node they are all computing nodes so our systems are made of many different computing nodes in different places they are not just uh, one application on the mobile everything is here no some computation is here some is on the sensor some is on the cloud and they need to talk to each other to exchange information with each other but it's necessary to have something in the environment okay so for example that speaker could be intelligent maybe it only it, uh, it, it only has a wire bringing the sound or maybe it has a cpu inside that can generate sounds maybe we don't know it there's, so it, there's maybe also a microphone in there or maybe a sensor or, or something else hmm? so something that is innocent as a speaker could actually be a very strong computing node that does a lot of stuff it doesn't okay not that one hmm? but in general we can double the function of a device with something new make make the complexity disappear and the function the functionality increase and with the trick we can put computers everywhere hmm? in many places and so thanks to many small computing nodes small means also cheap okay because you win maybe many of them we can create environments that actually exhibit intelligence in many places uh, about intelligence we already mentioned that uh, today okay artificial intelligence is a very um, very popular word no they, they make a lot of newspaper uh, articles are talking about the risks of artificial intelligence uh, it's all bullshit okay um, people are afraid that the computers tomorrow will take over the world but mm, plug the pull the plug and they will shut down but um, there, you are nowhere near to self-consciousness to computers okay but uh, you know journalists uh, need to fill some paper um, but uh, artificial intelligence are computing techniques are algorithmic techniques uh, to find solutions to problems okay uh, that is what they are and today we have really an explosion of new technologies ai technologies especially the explosion of the so-called deep learning uh, which means uh, an algorithm which is very, very difficult to understand and only few people by chance or by experience uh, can tune it to to behave correctly and um, about uh, uh, neural networks and so on but we have a lot of toolkits uh, of products available libraries that already help us doing this kind of uh, of uh, analysis of uh, forecasting and so on so actually um, we are in the position of integrating hmm, in our uh, in our products uh, some some kind of uh, ai techniques for example uh, all kind of speech recognition relies on artificial intelligence I was quite surprised positively from the quality, for example, of a YouTube transcription. Uh, 
my English is terrible uh, you you can feel it uh, um, but actually YouTube could uh, transcribe if you go to the, to the the captioning of the video quite correctly uh, what, what I was saying uh, so and it requires uh, uh, a lot of intelligence to understand the language uh, even spoken you know, by foreign uh, speaker and so on and uh, and so also for example for the italian classes that they go they, they uh, compared to a one or two years ago the quality of this has improved a lot it's not my language that improved it's the quality of the connection so many of these technologies could be integrated in your project let's not make let's not transform your project into ai projects okay we don't want to make a project where 90 percent of the work is uh, making the artificial intelligence part but we know that some components some ingredients can be easily added if you want um, so ai by itself is not a value ai is a set of techniques that allows us to give a better context understanding better adaptivity better proactivity huh? because it can give us some information already process, processed uh, and understood in a deeper way um okay this is uh, a <clears throat> you know for the theoretical point of view what we have to say about the definitions and uh, we try to have a look again at the at the kind of project that we want so after the definition okay so no, so we're trying to to start thinking uh, we also with you about uh, the, the type of projects so we are imagining something that enables user in a proactive way transparent invisible intelligent uh, all these characteristics with sensors actuators what kind of acting can we do what what is the context what, what may change do all people uh, interact in the same way or depending on the user these actions could be, could be different so let's try to you know, to reread uh, this diagram with the concept that we just uh, extracted from the definition hmm? so we imagine a use case with one person or more than one person uh, in one of these situations or, or many other situations and uh, how can the system understand the context decide what action to do how to modify the environment uh, and uh, act on the environment actually physically and later what kind of interaction it needs okay in the template that you have to upload these four items should be already mentioned we'll see we'll uh, see the template again in a moment and the same for the locations so in, the, in these different locations okay what are the activities that people do there what are the environmental variables that we want to measure that make sense to measure presence temperature i don't know humidity light the movement weight it depends um, how can we act on these environments so what how can we modify these uh, these environments for example if, if we imagine a cooking space uh, you have uh, many more things that you can do the i would say the more specific is the action or the more specific is the space that you are considering the more opportunities you have a generic space you know a hallway gives you a very little opportunities what, what can you do with a hallway maybe just you know help people go through or uh, avoid obstacles i don't know but the activity in a hallway is not very structured so if people don't have a, a, a defined behavior in that space it's very difficult to help them with the behavior because you don't know what they are doing there 
Right? But in a more structured environment, you know, a classroom is just more structured because I need to do something here, you need to do something there. So I have an expected behavior that can be improved, you have an expected behavior that can be worked on, for example. The communication between us is structured in some way, speaking, asking questions, and so on. So maybe if this is not the case because you're working on, on living spaces, but just to make the example, I, every activity or every space that is more structured, is more constrained, it's easier to improve because it will be clearer to us what the user will do there. Okay, so try to find some, some specific act, okay? Like I was saying, for example, cooking is a very specific activity. Maybe it's why, because it means cooking a cake or making coffee, or so it's too well. It, but there, you have a given set of devices that, that, that do something, that interact, that, that can be made intelligent. Right? Um, also, the, the bathroom, for example, no? is, a, is, a, is the entertainment part, so the living spi space, the garage, the cars, parking the cars, so finding the space, you know, trying to, to, to think about things to do or actions that are done in the space uh, and uh, the context in which these are done. Hmm? So just trying to put together this, the other, and all the characteristics of, of, uh, of MEA systems. And just uh, right now, this uh, slide should be, should, speak, should, should uh, be able to speak by itself. We need the four steps. So a mobile application alone is not enough. An automated system alone by itself is not enough. We need a bit of these four ingredients, okay? A bit. Don't make them too complex, okay? Uh, the course is uh, 14 week. Uh, we already gone by uh, one of the of them. One one week is already gone. Mm? So it means. Uh, 8% of the work uh, is already done, just to scare you. And, uh, <coughs> and so the time is running, so don't aim at something too complex. Find one context uh, and try to find the minimal amount uh, of sensing that you need, the minimum amount uh, of acting, the minimum amount of interaction that you need, uh, and put them together with some algorithmic reasoning. About sensing actuation, right now, you can imagine to be free. I want to sense uh, if people are laughing, for example. Can it be done? I don't know. For the moment, let's assume it can. Okay? Uh, later, we'll try to find some sensor, some algorithms or system to, ab to be able to detect that possible behavior, if people are laughing or, or crying. Maybe it's possible, but may, maybe not. During the course, maybe we are very good at finding backup solutions. We have a plan A, plan B, plan C. If it, if it doesn't work, uh, we fake it in some way. Okay, it's not a problem. We, if, we, we, if we can find the perfect laughing detector, we will make an approximate laughing detector, maybe. And, uh, and for, the, for the purpose of the project, it will be okay. So let, don't be limited by what you know currently today about these uh, technologies. Some of them, we will learn them in the labs, we learn to use them, and some of them, we will study them. Because maybe we didn't think about uh, some kind of sensor, some kind of actuator, they are not in the lab. One of your projects comes up with a good idea, and so we will study together how to do that. And we'll try to simplify the project in order to make it feasible. Okay, but this is something that we'll do in the next two or three months. Right now, don't be limited by this, okay? Think about the users and say, okay, what kind of information do I need? What kind of sensing extracted from the user or from the environment? Then we will study what kind of sensing is more adequate for that, okay? And the same for actuation. Um, as I mentioned last time, but it was very quick at the end of, se of, the, of the lecture, so it's uh, worth to, to discuss it uh, with more, more slowly. And um, many 
resources are today offered by cloud services okay and uh, you you want to implement a scheduling uh, system you have google calendar that does 90 percent of the work for you for example and gives you notification when you want them and so on so let's use it okay don't build uh, from scratch something that is already existing you want to get some information about the traffic okay you can put a sensor or a camera in the street uh, or you can ask google maps okay there are different types of sensors some is direct measurement in some cases indirect measurement through a different online service okay but our goal is to get that information in the cheapest possible way where cheap means our time our development time okay so let's try to exploit all the services that are already there especially for let's say sensing or for some part of automation for example some some functions can be already in the workflow managers notification systems and so on they're already there of course for the acting part uh, we need to do actually uh, really in place because you google cannot act uh, on some devices hmm? but they can be used okay again it's maybe too early today to think about those but when you are developing the system always think uh, is there any device already on the market already available is there any online service that i can use to avoid developing my stuff okay our focus is not developing a piece of technology is uh, integrating a system hmm? and um, we have also some additional constraints due to the fact that we need to have the system working in the lab so we cannot uh, create an, or new walls uh, or destroy existing walls or something like that uh, we need to be to create a project that can be run and experimented in the constraints of the current lab so we cannot modify the infrastructure we cannot modify lighting heating so it technically would be possible to control the temperature in this room okay if you could do those two are two thermostats if you open them and you connect the wires you can control the temperature in this room but then mm, some people the, the maintenance people would not be so happy if you go and modify um, some, some some plant no if you want to control the lights so but just open that box and you can control everything uh, concerning the electrical part of this uh, of this room mm? but it's not allowed it's not permitted mm? even for security reasons so we must imagine something which does not modify the infrastructure of the lab of all the classroom where where we uh, uh, implement the system it's easy to add new stuff okay let's say then a new sensor a new thermostat we, do, we are not using that one we put a new do a new one so that we don't have to modify the system mm. that can be done so uh, in, in, let's think about uh, the a, a demo that can be done without a uh, changing the environment that should be feasible with existing equipment so in the uh, in a couple of uh, lectures okay the first classes in, in lab will be about python programming so we will not touch the, the, the devices but after a few weeks uh, we will have uh, uh, we will show you the wealth of devices that are available in the lab and you can choose any one of, uh, of them for your project and if, if none of them is available we can in some way procure them so sometimes we have some uh, device that was lent by a friend that uh, a friend or somebody in some company around that had uh, one of these devices that lent us for a couple of months uh, for doing the project in some other cases we do, we bought a device uh, specifically for the project uh, because mm, there were uh, there was no other way of course if they are cheap enough okay I, i'm not buying gold plated watches or, or rolexes or something like that hmm? and something that should be easy to demonstrate okay uh, easy to show in the lab doesn't require three hours of training uh, to, to to run or is see is easy to see that it's working is doing the intended work it's not too complex because you will have to uh, assemble and disassemble it many times okay 
because uh, the lab is shared it's not only for you so you come on the monday you work on your system and then you go home you take the pieces away and then you assemble them again so uh something which is also you know, e easy to show easy to assemble easy to be moved hmm? uh, you know that we are organizing for september a showcase of the projects uh, just this morning i was at the incubator to start thinking about the logistics uh, so if you have something that is modular enough that it can be brought and transferred somewhere else uh, so i seen everything i've seen people uh, working with boxes wooden boxes uh, people doing with some plastics uh, for their project uh, people with the with the waste baskets uh, with, the, with the, the device inside uh, so try also to be creative uh, about how to show the project and how to move it mm. and uh, in general we are not allowed to do permanent installations so if you want to put a sensor in that corridor in that hallway you can't okay you can put it uh, for a moment and put it with patafix or something or for some scotch tape uh, but then you remo you need to remove it when you when you finish you cannot leave it there first because it will not be it will not stay there somebody will remove it uh, but uh, actually it's not allowed if we want to install something uh, in a fixed place uh, we can do that uh, in the ladispe with some limitations but in some car we can if you need to put a camera in a fixed position or a, or a light in a fixed position we just arrange them with the uh, with the technicians in ladispe and uh, and we can do that of course uh, you if you need some permanent installation always remember that when you move the project uh, for doing a demo somewhere else uh, think of a plan b how can i show that functionality if the camera is not there okay um okay that's more details about the project uh, i mentioned that this was the link to the google document but uh, i just wanted to comment a bit more on the on the content of the of your submission so this is, uh, I saw that there, are, there were already some uh, messages on Slack for forming the groups. Uh, a lot of people asked, uh, say, uh, but I, I didn't see nobody reply to the others. So I imagine they were, the replies were private messages or whatever. I will finish maybe mm, 10 minutes uh, earlier uh, so that maybe you can, we can use also this time for discussing among yourself to compose the groups. Um, and uh, remember to assign the, to each each person a role in the project uh, this can be a possible list of roles uh, depending on uh, your best skills uh, okay or, or how you can contribute to the to the project uh, remember to put an email that you will check regularly okay so if you're not checking daily the police or mail uh, put another address we don't care about uh, whether it's the official one or not but we want to be able to communicate with you quickly and uh, darkly and uh, the most important part are these uh, five to ten lines uh, we are not asking yet uh, to explain uh, where is the sensing was the acting was the reasoning yet uh, it will be the next step uh, but of course you should already think about that when you write these sentences okay so tell a story here what the, what is the user doing and how is it doing better with our with my system with our system uh, what happens on this um, uh, on these uh, submissions is that we will revise them and group them actually in three one group will be the green the good proposals and uh, in the discussion in the classroom we will say okay this group is authorized to continue with this project okay the other one it will be the yellow light so the project could be okay but needs some improvement okay so we will give you feedback ideas on how to modify them what to add what needs to be added what needs to be removed what needs to be changed uh, in the proposal so the idea would be good but the explanation or the or there's something missing or something wrong and then the, so, uh, the third group will be the red uh, red light projects projects that cannot be accepted because they're they don't comply with the requirement in that case uh, we will propose you some uh, to choose some other project that maybe we decide okay uh, in the last years uh, we told people with the red light to think about something else uh, 
but then week passed uh, with uh, maybe different ideas different topics uh, uh, it was very very painful because people were couldn't start working on the project because they didn't have the good idea so this year we are trying to make one step forward and give you some ideas uh, if you really don't can't uh, you know, um, find a good idea for you if some of you is very creative creative and uh, you have more than one idea please list them okay if maybe you have two or three ideas you are not sure which are which one is best uh, list all of them okay this one group and then many descriptions we will evaluate all of them and we say uh, we will tell you okay this one we think it's the best and the other two will be available for the others that maybe are not creative enough or didn't come with a good idea and they, you can sell them on the market uh, the, the good ideas <laughs> and uh, I, don't, I don't i don't want to know anything about that but uh, you're free for doing to do that okay so you are free if you have ideas uh, upload them and so that in that in that day we will try to put together all the good ideas and all the intermediate ideas to to go forward okay so uh, as i promised i leave you some time to discuss among yourself and then later luigi will come and introduce to to the first steps in python hmm? thank you